What's up folks, it's Sacrificio back again with another Town Hall 8 hybrid base build. This one I bu built myself, I designed it from scratch, and what I was looking for here was a base that I could use on a daily basis for farming, but also switch in and switch out my Town Hall when I need to get involved in clan wars. So my focus here was to keep my resources as close to the middle as possible. Um, obviously my, my Dark Elixir storage is the most important thing. Um, but as well as that, I needed to keep my gold and my elixir storages as close to the middle as possible. I tried to distribute the mortars and the air defenses equally across the base. It's a bit easier with the mortars now that there are four of them. However, the air defenses are still a little bit tricky because there's only three of them. So uh, what I did was uh, I, I did a bit of trial and error. I did a bit of juggling and balancing and, and uh, found a, a layout that I was quite comfortable with. Now, as you can see, my walls aren't yet fully upgraded, so I still have some of the older walls in the center. Um, what I would say is that, uh, oh, you can also see there's a gap there. Now, that gap is there because I didn't have quite enough walls to finish off the entire base, and uh, this particular space with a gap I thought wasn't too bad because I only have one mortar and one air defense and two elixirs, elixir storages uh, that are accessible in between those walls. So I didn't think it was too bad uh, a compromise. Um, I put a, a spring trap in there. Obviously, uh, you know, if you have troops in there walking around, they're gonna walk straight over that spring trap. Now the duck elixir drill, I also tried to keep that as close as possible. Um, obviously it's not as important to keep that in the center as it is the storages, but uh, it's one of the more important collectors that you have. So I tried to keep that into the center. Now with this, with these uh, spaces I have out here on the sides, <clears throat> and I've put some traps in this corner, the reason I've kept those spaces at four, uh, as in four squares, is because I, I want to keep the enemy guessing where my Tesla towers may be. So that's why I, I, you know, I could have straightened that out and made it a nice even curve, but I wanted to keep a, a space of four there so that the enemy thinks there may be a Tesla tower there waiting for them when they do their attack. Now, uh, on the outsides here, um, there's, there's always a bit of a compromise when it comes to what you keep within walls and what you keep outside walls. And on the outside here, I, I wanted to try to not have too many structures, too many defense buildings within the same set of walls. So I've really used a lot of walls on the in, inner areas of the base around the defense structures as much as possible. And... Uh, um, at the same time, I tried to make it symmetrical so that it's uh, it's not too ugly on the eye. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a bit superficial, but uh, that's the way it goes. So here I have a, a couple of traps. Um, I'm distributing the traps around the base. Unfortunately, in this design, I don't really have a lure where I'm luring people into specific traps. Um, that may count against me, but so far it's actually been okay when it comes to the attacks that I've seen so far, and I'll, I'll show you the replays of those. So, so yeah, I'm not seeing it as a, as a major issue. <clears throat> now, as I roll out these, these buildings on the outside, uh, when I zoom out and you take a look at the, the entire base, what you'll notice is that I distributed them evenly so that they do look symmetrical. Now, the other thing is I've put the collectors next to uh, cannons and archer towers, so that at least they're not being given away for free. So if someone comes up with a couple of uh, archers and he's shooting away at your gold mines and your elixir collectors, he's not going to get them easily. He's definitely going to get them, but he's not going to get them easily. So um, that's an important thing for me. Uh, obviously, if you've seen any of my farming videos, you'll know that I, I love looking for elixir collectors and gold mines that are very, very easy to pick off on the outside of a base. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to defend myself from someone doing the same thing to me. So we're getting pretty close here, almost used up all our buildings, all our structures. And um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out and I'll show you how the coverage works. Um, the, the, the giant bombs and spring traps, what I tried to do here was focus them on the areas where the air missiles are. This is to help protect against uh, hog riders who are just coming in to uh, take out your air missiles for a hog and dragon attack. So that's the base. Um, that's how it looks. Now, uh, if you want to do some farming, if you want to go into farming mode, it's very simple. You remove your lab, you remove your laboratory, 
and you put it on the outside and then you put your put sorry on the inside and then you put your town hall on the outside and that allows people to just pick off your town hall and this has proven to be pretty successful for me that's how you that's how you uh, protect your resources um, so here I'm going to show you a couple of replays this first replay is um, actually the guy was not not set on destroying my base what he was looking to do was take out the town hall and then take out all of the collect collectors so he wasn't actually trying to destroy my base so I wouldn't use this as a good reference for someone who's trying to attack and failing but um, I, I thought I'd show it a, this was the first attack I had on my base after I uh, after I deployed the new design so what he should have worked out, I guess, a little bit sooner is that there's not much resources. There are not many resources inside those collectors. So there's not a lot of point in, in sticking around. The second attack I had on my base was uh, was actually 10 dragons. <clears throat> now, luckily, they were level 1 dragons, so they didn't quite make it all the way. They did, however, do a significant amount of damage. So um, I'm interested to hear feedback on this one. This, uh, this again, I, I thought was a bit of a strange attack since I didn't have that many resources. This 10 dragon attack at, at level 1 dragons, they cost about, tw I think, 25,000 elixir, which means he spent 250,000 elixir on this attack. And, uh, you know, as you can see from my uh, loot that I had available, I only had around 70,000 elixir available and around 20,000 gold available. So I'm not exactly sure uh, if he cared about that, if he was more interested in trophies. But um, as you can see, if not for his Barbarian King, he wouldn't have even got a two-star victory here. So uh, that's, uh, that's not a bad defense, I guess. Uh, although, again, they were only level one dragons, so not a whole lot to brag about just yet. The next attack I'm going to show is also a dragon attack. These are, are not level one dragons, so okay, that's a bit better. Now the only thing is here I did have a dragon in my clan castle. This was actually a part of a clan war attack. Um, I did have a dragon in my clan castle and I wouldn't have done it if I was him but he dropped all his dragons in the same location. Now I guess the reason he was doing that is because he wanted to uh, drop his rage spell and have all of the dragons benefit from it. Um, uh, you know I, I don't know I don't see it as a very strong strategy but um, you know my preference is to spread the dragons out. Um, but, uh, but anyway, that's what he did. So, so he got a little bit further than the previous attacker. And, uh, I, I put the reason for that down to the fact that he had higher level dragons still though, he did not manage to take out the entire base. And the, you can see the, the final air missile, uh, defense, uh, really stuck, stuck it out to him. And by the time the Barbarian King broke through the walls, even though they're not very high level walls, by the time he broke through, it was too late. Now this attack is a little bit different. This is a, a, a mass archer giant attack and um, with, with a couple of healers in, in there. So this guy actually does make a bit of progress. He does get through a lot of the resources and um, uh, yeah, he, he, does, he does have an okay attack. He doesn't get all the way through the base though. So once again, I successfully avoided giving away a three star victory to anyone and uh, so far I haven't given away any three star victories I guess once I move back into the uh, the crystal league it's going to be inevitable that I start getting wiped out with three star victories but that's my base and I hope you like it so that's all I have for you today thank you very much for watching my video I hope you subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash unyielding sacrificio Please like the video, please uh, give me some feedback, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Bye.